Hey everybody, welcome to Book Fun Friday, the Sunday edition. This is number 12 in the Book Fun Friday series. The young adult novel I'm going to talk about today is titled Cinder, and Cinder is written by the young adult author Marissa Meyer. Let me tell you a little bit about this book. Um, first of all, you need to know that Cinder is a science fiction novel. Now, I've shared this with y'all before. Science fiction isn't my normal go-to when I'm looking to read a book, but y'all, this book is fantastic. I'm so glad I read it. Yes, it's sci-fi, and there's certainly sci-fi elements in it, in it but the, the narrative that surrounds the sci-fi elements is so compelling, you almost forget that you're reading a science fiction novel. It's that good. Uh, a couple of things to note about this book. Um, number one, this book is a takeoff on the classic fairy tale Cinderella. Um, we all know the Cinderella story, of course. A young girl who is left in the care of a stepmother who doesn't want her. She has a couple of stepsisters, one of whom doesn't really want her around. She gets stuck with all the dirty tasks uh, that the family doesn't want to do. She always has the fireplace soot on her face. Um, and her life seems pretty bleak until she crosses paths with a prince. So keep all that in mind um, as I'm talking to you about this particular version of Cinderella. The second thing you need to know about, um, I mentioned that this is sci-fi, but it's the, it's the kind of science fiction that's set on Earth, not in space. It's set on Earth, but many, many years in the future. The Earth of Cinder um, is an Earth where all homes are automated. Everything is digitized. Um, people don't, don't drive cars anymore. They take hovers everywhere that they travel. All homes have a robot or a droid that helps them with household chores and tasks, that, that kind of thing. Um, so it's that kind of science fiction novel. Don't think space or on a spaceship or traveling in space. This is actually set on Earth, but just set on Earth a long time in the future. So knowing those two things, that it's a takeoff on the Cinderella story and it's a science fiction set on Earth many years in the future story, keep those two things in mind as I'm talking to you about this particular uh, book. So let's talk about Cinder. Well, I'm sure you've gleaned, but Cinder is the name of the protagonist of this novel. And Cinder is a 16-year-old girl um, who also happens to be a cyborg. Now, if you're not sure what a cyborg is, that's okay. A cyborg is part human and part machine. Now, Cinder wasn't always a cyborg. She was actually born a human, completely human girl. But when she was 11 years old, she suffered a terrible, terrible accident. And in order to save her life, the doctors had to actually amputate some of her limbs and reconstruct some of her internal structures with robotics. So, for example, she has a robotic hand that she always wears gloves um, on to hide. Um, she has a robotic foot that she keeps obviously in a shoe with long pants on or long skirts on so that people can't see that. The reason that she keeps this hidden is this. Um, cyborgs in this society are looked down upon. They're marginalized. They're considered like second-class citizens. And poor Cinder, here she is, a cyborg, being thought of as a second-class citizen, and just like the Cinderella story, has been left in the care of a stepmother. Her, her father has died. She's been left in the care of a stepmother who doesn't want her. She has a couple of stepsisters, one of whom doesn't want her around. And she's relegated to this, this second-class role in this family. Well, the one thing that Cinder has going for her uh, despite all of these things, these other things that she doesn't have going for her, is she is extremely mechanically minded. She's brilliant when it comes to wiring things or repairing things. So if you need a tablet fixed or a robot repaired, um, she is the go-to person to do that. And is actually how she earns money. Not that she gets to keep her own money. The money automatically goes to her stepmother. But that's how she earns money to support her family. Now it's hard work, it's dirty work, it's nothing glamorous work, um, but it's what she happens to be really good at doing. So as the novel opens, that's where Cinder is. She's in her booth in downtown 
um, um, doing, doing the mechanical work for which she is so widely known. Now, an interesting thing happens as she's in her booth in the beginning of the novel doing her mechanical work. She's approached by a young man who brings a robot and sets that robot up on her counter. And he says, hey, I was just wondering, can you repair this robot? I heard you were the best mechanic in the city. And when she looks up at this young man, she realizes she's not talking to any normal run-of-the-mill guy. She's actually talking to the prince of their province. And as they fall into conversation with each other, it becomes pretty clear, pretty clear that the prince is smitten with her. And of course, he's the prince. She's smitten with him as well. And as their conversation comes to a close, the prince leans forward. She can't even believe it. And he says to her, hey, I was wondering if you would be interested in accompanying me to a ball that will be happening in my palace a couple weeks from now. You think about the classic Cinderella story about crossing paths with a prince at a ball. And now our Cinder in this book is being invited to the ball by the prince. And of course, bless her heart, she wants to go, but she can't say yes to that. She's not only this mechanic with grease on her face um, working this menial job. She couldn't date a prince, but in addition to that, she's cyborg. She really can't date a prince in this particular world. And so everything in the story after that invitation is what leads up to the ball and Cinder and what happens between Cinder and the prince. So I'm going to share just a short passage. This is early in the novel. Um, Cinder's been at work um, that morning and has come home to find her two stepsisters who are being readied for the upcoming ball. Now, there are a couple of names here I should clarify. Her two stepsisters are named Pearl and Peony. Um, her stepmother's name is Adri, and the family droid um, or robot is called Ico, and you'll hear all of those names in this particular section. In the center of the room, Pearl and Peony each stood swathed in silk and tulle. Peony was holding up her dark curly hair while a woman Cinder didn't recognize fidgeted with her dress's neckline. Peony caught sight of Cinder over the woman's shoulder and her eyes sparked a glow bursting across her face. She gestured at the dress with a barely silenced squeal. Cinder grinned back. Her younger stepsister, the one who liked her, looked angelic, her dress all silver and shimmering with hints of lavender when caught in the fire's light. Pearl! Adri gestured at her older daughter with a twirling finger, and Pearl spun around, displaying a row of pearl buttons down her back. Her dress matched Peony's with its snug bodice and flouncy skirt, only it was made of stardust gold. Hmm, let's take her waist in some more. Threading a pin through the hem of Peony's neckline, the stranger turned and startled at seeing Cinder in the doorway. She quickly turned away. Stepping back, the woman removed a bundle of sharp pins from between her lips and tilted her head to one side. It's already very snug, she said. We want her to dance, don't we? We want her to find a husband, said Adri. No, no, said the seamstress, even as she reached out and pinched the material around Pearl's waist. Cinder could tell. Pearl was sucking in her stomach as much as she could. She detected the edges of ribs beneath the fabric. She is much too young for marriage. I'm 17, Pearl said, glaring at the woman. 17? See? You're a child. Now is the time for fun. She is too expensive for fun, said Adri. I expect results from this gown. Do not worry. She will be as lovely as morning dew. Stuffing the pins back into her mouth, 
the woman returned her focus to Peony's neckline. Adri lifted her chin and finally acknowledged Cinder's presence by swiping her gaze down Cinder's filthy boots and cargo pants. Why aren't you at work? Um, work closed down early today, said Cinder, with a meaningful nod at Adri. Feigning nonchalance, Cinder thrust a thumb toward the hall, so I'll just go get cleaned up and then I'll be ready for my dress fitting. The seamstress paused. Another dress? I did not bring material for... Have you replaced the mag belt on the hover yet? Adri interrupted. Cinder's smile faltered. Uh, no, not yet. Well, none of us will be going to the ball unless that gets fixed, will we? <sighs> Cinder stifled her irritation. They'd already had this conversation twice in the past week. I need money to buy a new mag belt, 800 at least. If my paycheck from the market wasn't deposited directly into your account, I would have bought one by now. And I'm supposed to trust you not to spend all your money on frivolous toys? Adri said toys with a glare at Iko, the family robot, and a curl of her lip even though Iko technically belonged to her. Besides, we can't afford both a mag belt and a new dress that you will only wear once. You'll have to find some other way of fixing the hover or find your own gown for the ball. Irritation hardened in Cinder's gut. She might have pointed out that Pearl and Peony could have been given ready-made rather than custom dresses in order to budget for Cinder's dress. She might have pointed out that they would only wear their dresses one time too. She might have pointed out that as she was the one doing all the work, the money should be hers to spend as she saw fit. But all arguments would come to nothing. Legally, Cinder belonged to Adri as much as the household robot, and so too did her money. Adri loved to remind her of that. So she stomped the anger down before Adri could see a spark of rebellion and said, I may be able to offer a trade for the mag belt. I'll check at the local shops. Adri sniffed. Why don't we trade that worthless robot for it? Iko ducked behind Cinder. Oh, we wouldn't get much for her, said Cinder. Nobody wants such an old model. No, they don't, do they? Perhaps I will sell both of you off as spare parts. Adri reached forward and fidgeted with the unfinished hem of Pearl's sleeve. Look, I don't care how you fix the hover. Just fix it before the ball and cheaply. I don't need that pile of junk taking up valuable parking space. Cinder tucked her hands into her back pockets. Wait, are you saying that if I fix the hover and get a dress, I can really go this year? Adri's lips puckered slightly at the corners. It will be a miracle if you can find something suitable to wear that will hide your... Her gaze dropped to Cinder's boots. <clears throat> Eccentricities. But yes, if you fix the hover, I suppose you can go. To the ball. And again, this book is titled Cinder and it's written by Marissa Meyer. Well, y'all, as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I hope you're well and healthy and all of your people are well and healthy too. Um, I will see you next time for uh, one more edition of Book Fun Friday. Take care. Bye.